Hello, my name is Dr. Elizabeth King and today I'm really excited to talk to you about some new research that I've undertaken with a team of Canadian investigators, really on understanding the progression of symptoms during the menopause transition for women living with HIV. I'd first like to gratefully acknowledge that I'm fortunate to live, play and work on the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh peoples in British Columbia. So by way of background, we know that people living with HIV are aging. And we're seeing this trend in women living with HIV also, with more and more of them entering their midlife. In Canada in particular, we have about a quarter of women living with HIV that are menopausal. And this is expected to more than double in the next decade. Now some important things about women living with HIV is that they commonly experience menopausal symptoms and these symptoms often reduce their quality of life. What we're starting to learn though is that women living with HIV are often undertreated for their symptoms. And we think that these treatment rates may relate in part to a lack of understanding of the progression of symptoms themselves. Most studies of symptoms to date look at symptoms at one single time point. However, we know that symptoms in menopause develop over several years and are dynamic in nature. Therefore, understanding the progression of symptoms will really allow clinicians to better counsel women on what to expect during their menopausal years, and also will provide guidance on whether or not symptom or treatment is indicated to ameliorate the symptoms. And so really that was the motivation for us to undertake this study uh, where we essentially have the goal of assessing the progression of menopausal symptoms across menopausal phases for women living with HIV. In order to do this study, um, we are able to use a large cohort called CHIWOS, uh, which is essentially a prospective cohort of women living with HIV through multiple provinces in Canada. And this, this study has multiple time points, and so we'll be using two different time points that are 18 months apart. We include women in this study who are over 40, perimenopausal and menopausal, and cisgendered. And we excluded anybody who had abnormal menstrual patterns for a number of different reasons listed there, mainly because our, our definitions of menopausal phases was dependent on menstrual history. We went on to use four different categorizations for phases, as you see here. Um, we used, or we defined perimenopause uh, as being characterized as uh, women having irregularities in their menstrual cycles, and menopause was defined as having no menstrual cycles for a year as per WHO definitions. Uh, women were then asked to assess their symptoms by a questionnaire, and we essentially asked whether they had had any symptoms in the last two weeks uh, and went through a number of different symptom types, as you can see here, of seven different menopausal symptom types and women were asked to rate them from zero or no symptoms to three or severe symptoms. You can see here a flow diagram of the participants that were assessed and included in our, in our um, study. You can see here we evaluated symptoms in both waves of the CHIWO study, and we ended up including a total of 457 participants for a total of 703 observations. Once we took out women for whom we couldn't define a phase of menopause because menopausal timing was not clear, we were left with a total of, uh, with an, a fairly large number of observations in each of our menopausal phases, ranging from 94 to 221. You'll see here that the cohort of women that we included in our study were highly representative of Canadian women living with HIV of their menopausal years. The mean age was around th uh, 55. In terms of ethnic distribution, around 50% were Caucasian, around a quarter were African, Caribbean, or Black, and around 15% were Aboriginal. In our study, as is common in Canadian women living with HIV, women had high, uh, well-controlled HIV parameters, including uh, uh, high rates of viral load suppression and high rates of CD4 counts greater than 200, and as well, the majority were on antiretroviral therapy. 
When we went on to assess menopausal symptoms, we found that the large majority of women experienced at least one of the menopausal symptoms we assessed. And so when we looked at this more closely, um, at least or around 87% reported having at least one mild symptom, 76% one moderate, and 55% at least one severe. When we looked at the most common symptom types that people were or that women were reporting, the most common was joint and muscle aches, followed by depressive symptoms and then hot flashes. Interestingly, we also went on to assess the women who were offered treatment for their symptoms, and we found that these were surprisingly low rates, uh, that there were surprisingly low rates of treatment. In terms of menopause hormonal therapy, 8% of women had ever reported being on menopause hormonal therapy. And this is despite an, uh, uh, around 50% of women in their perimenopausal years um, suggesting that they had at least moderate hot flashes, which is the primary indication for hormonal therapy. Now moving on to our main research question, uh, we went on to look at how symptoms evolved across menopausal phases. And here we first took symptoms collectively, all symptoms together, and we found that the symptoms together are most severe during perimenopause and then decrease across menopausal phases. But then when we took each symptom type, we actually found that a number of symptoms didn't seem to be too affected based or significantly affected by menopausal phase. There were two symptoms, however, that did significantly vary by menopausal phase, and that was vasomotor symptoms and irritability of which vasomotor symptoms by far had the strongest association with menopausal phase and vasomotor symptoms started high in perimenopausal and then um, decreased along the menopause transition. Now we looked a little bit more closely at vasomotor symptoms to look at, the, at its um, progression throughout the phases. And with this we saw some interesting results. Um, so interestingly, the proportion of women experiencing symptoms did not significantly decrease until greater than five years in menopause. And here you can see this. Uh, you can see this graph where we have the estimated proportion of women experiencing symptoms on the y-axis. And we have those women with moderate symptoms in green and um, severe symptoms in blue. And you can see throughout the first three phases of menopause that these, um, the, the proportion of women with moderate or severe symptoms remains fairly constant and doesn't really decrease until greater than five years in menopause. Um, and we did stepwise comparisons looking at the number of women experiencing symptoms at each stage and comparing them. And we found consistently that all different stages did not significantly vary until we compared them to greater than five years in menopause. So taken together, these findings I think are really important because they really shed light on how common it is for women living with HIV to experience symptoms and how their current treatment rates are quite low. We also found that hot flashes and irritability were most influenced by menopausal phases. And this is really not that surprising given that hot flashes are known to be hormonally mediated and therefore influenced by hormonal changes that occur throughout the menopause transition. Finally, our results suggest that vasomotor symptoms may not decrease until well into menopause. And really this would argue against using a watch and wait approach when managing menopausal symptoms. And we'd argue that really the best approach is to offer treatment and management for symptoms early on in the menopause transition because these symptoms are not likely to go away soon. In terms of study limitations, uh, one limitation of this analysis is that some of the symptoms assessed are, are um, or may not be attributable to menopause in some of the cases, um, such as depression and um, joint pain. And in future studies, this could be better assessed by including a premenopausal group for comparison. In addition, some of the women in our evaluation were on treatment, so the symptoms that we report might be underestimated. This study really sets the stage for future studies, particularly longitudinal studies that are able to really follow each women along the menopause transition and further characterize the progression of their symptoms. And in addition, it'd be very interesting to compare this to HIV negative uh, groups to see the unique experience that women living with HIV have across the menopausal transition. 
So with that, I'd like to extend a thank you to my supervisors, Dr. Melanie Murray and Dr. Mona Lutfi, for their help and support uh, through this project. And I'd also like to thank a number of individuals listed here, as well as my funding support and the Karma and Chiwo study groups, uh, without whom this work would not have been possible. And thank you for your time and attention.